In this video, we will be discussing the graph isomorphism problem. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain a couple of terms. Uh, I'll explain what a graph isomorphism actually is. And then the, the question we're going to discuss is, is there a way to see, uh, an efficient way to see if two graphs are essentially the same? Um, and we're going to talk about, or I'm going to talk about, Laszlo Babai's um, algorithm to basically making this question uh, a little bit more efficient to answer, okay? Uh, so before we get into this, uh, the first thing I want to do is define our terms, okay? Um, so first, what is a graph and why do we care? A graph G uh, is a pair of vertices and edges, where V is just the set of all vertices and E is just the set of all edges, okay? So a vertex is just a point and an edge is a line that connects two points. So uh, down here, I have an example. So we have graph G, okay? And we have uh, a bunch of vertices. So we have the set A, B, C, and D. And we have a couple of edges, right? We have edge A, C. We have edge AD. We have edge DC. And we have edge DB. All right, so a set of uh, vertices and a set of edges. Okay, so those are like our basic definitions. It has nothing to do with X, Y. It has nothing to do with the Cartesian plane. Um, this is just a, a couple of points in space connected by edges. Okay, so why do we care? Um, which is always a good question to ask. Um, when we're talking about graph theory, uh, we're talking about just a set of points uh, and a set of edges that connect those points, um, which sounds really, really simple. Um, but just in, in thinking about this and reading about this a little bit, uh, this can be used to answer a lot of different problems regarding either efficiency uh, or distance traveled or a bunch of other things. Okay, so what I like to think about... Um, in order to make this relevant, at least, uh, like immediately truck routes, Uber, um, Amazon distribution centers, but also like computing maps and logic maps and circuits and all that stuff. Okay. So there's a lot of like different uses for it. Um, and really it's just used to help answer different problems. Okay. That's usually what the graphs actually do. Okay. So I want to give a little bit of background. The first problem involving like quote unquote graph theory was the seven bridges of Konigsberg, um, which is a city in Russia. Now it's called Kaliningrad. Um, and the, the, the question goes like this. So for a city set up in the following manner, uh, as I have drawn below, um, is it possible to cross every bridge exactly once and end up exactly where you started? Okay. So we have a couple of rivers. Um, we have an island, right? So this is like our island. Um, and we have a couple of different land masses that are connected by, by these seven bridges. And Euler came up with this question, or didn't come up with this question, but tried to answer this question. Um, can you cross every bridge once and end up exactly where you started? And in order to do this, he kind of not invented graph theory, but he, he at least started it. Um, and what he did is he drew a graph like I had up above, um, essentially just connecting all three of these nodes in different ways that are these bridges okay so what i mean by that is if we have different vertices we can connect these vertices uh in different ways right so this north point right that's connected to this middle point by two bridges and then this middle point is connected to the south southern point by another two bridges uh, both the north and the south are connected to the east. And then the east is connected to the island. Okay, so we get a graph that looks like this, essentially. Um, and the, the big question is, can you cross every bridge once um, and land up exactly where you started? And Euler came up with the answer to this. The answer is no. Um, and the reason being is because there is an odd degree uh, vertex. There's at least one odd degree vertex. And what that means is... Um, for example, like 
this this vertex right here um, that is connected to or that has that has three edges connected to it right so and really I guess a better example is this point right here this has three vertices connected to it so the reason you can't uh, cross every every bridge once or have an uh, Eulerian path is because you have that odd degree vertex I'm not going to get into that. This is just one of the, the, the simple examples that we had before. So um, stuff like that, right? This is the perfect example of a, of a graph theory problem. So now I want to kind of explain what it means to be isomorphic. Okay. Um, so uh, first I'm going to give like a really mathy example, and then I'm going to give a really simple example definitions okay so what does it mean for two graphs to be isomorphic so two graphs g1 and D, g2 uh, where g1 has a set of vertices v1 and the set of edges e1 and g2 has the set of vertices v2 and the set of edges e2 those two things are isomorphic if there is a bijective map right so one to one and onto if there is an operation fee from v the set of vertices in, in graph one to the set of vertices in V2, such that for any two vertices in V1, under that operation, it creates a corresponding edge in E2, right? So we have an edge in, in graph one, and under this operation, we have an edge in E2, right? So all this means, and the really simple example is, um, Two graphs are isomorphic if there's a if there are corresponding vertices and corresponding edges. That's that, that's the simplest way we can put it. Okay, so I have an example down bottom. Um, these two graphs are isomorphic because they have corresponding points to one another. Okay, so and and I colored these to make sure we could kind of see these clearly. Right, Ed, uh, vertex A, right, that corresponds to vertex V. And we can do this in a lot of different ways, but this is the way I chose. Um, vertex B corresponds to vertex Z. Vertex C corresponds to Y. D corresponds to X. And E corresponds to W. Okay. And likewise, those edges between those points all correspond to one another. So vertex A, or sorry, edge AB, right? That corresponds to this edge VZ. And it's isomorphic if all of those things correspond to one another, right? So there's some operation, there's some function, uh, or there's some like rearrangement of vertices that gives the next graph. And that's what it means to be isomorphic. Okay, so again, a good question to ask, why is this important? Uh, the first um, kind of application of graph isomorphisms or molecular graphs. So there's a database of atomic structures and molecules um, and it's, it's easy if they look the same. Okay. But, but some atomic structures, the way people, some people draw them versus others, it's going to look a little bit different. So determining if those two things are the same is really important. Okay. Um, I would draw that, but it's going to look something like Right, and there's different branches. Um, I am not a chemist, so this is probably not accurate at all. Uh, but there's going to be really long strains of stuff that looks like this. Okay, and being able to determine if they are the same is really important. Um, other than that, there's like logic graphs and computation. Right, if one logic graph is the same as the other and they get to the same space, then they're just as efficient as, as one another. There's networks from social networks to um, Wi-Fi networks to electrical networks. Right, all of those things kind of have to do with gra graph isomorphisms. So, what's the problem? Um, the problem I want to discuss is: is there an algorithm to show that two graphs are isomorphic? Right. So, the graphs that we had above, those are pretty easy to see, and you can kind of go through every single vertex and every single edge and and see if they're isomorphic, see if they have corresp corresponding edges and vertices. Um, but as soon as you get to higher ones you have a lot more things to check. Specifically, right, with n vertices, we have n factorial different permuta or different 
arrangements that we need to check. Okay, and that gets really, really big, really, really quick. So our first answer is yes, right? We simply just check every vertex and check every edge and see if they correspond to a different graph. And if you can do that, then those two graphs are isomorphisms. The problem with this is that one, it takes a long time. And really that's it, okay? Um, again, if you have n vertices, there are n permutations uh, that you need to be checked. And the time, like the number of things you'd have to check uh, is called exponential time, right? So this big O, right, that's big O two to the n. Um, that's how long it would take to check every single thing. At least that's what I've read. I think it should be like n factorial. Either way, it's really big, okay? And this is called exponential time. It, it's very close to exponential time, which is considered inefficient, right? The only efficient number of steps that you can have is polynomial, right? And if it's exponential, that is clearly bigger than polynomial. Um, another way is to kind of break graphs up into different pieces and then see if those things correspond, right? So uh, Laszlo Babai's algorithm uh, says we want to reduce the graph of degree n, right, the number of vertices, to a moderate number of significantly smaller instances. Right, so again, we're just breaking up the graph. And what this means, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find um, a function, right, where and it's, this is a recurrence relation, where we're splitting it up and we have a branch. So we have this branching factor. And then we have this original kind of part of the graph. And what we want is that these two products are going to be less than or equal to the original um, function of time for this number of vertices. Okay, so what this ultimately does is it reduces the amount of time needed to prove an isomorphism, um, and it, it, it takes a, lo a whole lot less time. It's called quasi-polynomial time because it's not quite polynomial time, but it's definitely a lot less than exponential time. Right, so down here we have right the original amount of time it took to or the original best time it took to find that two graphs are isomorphic uh, to the new Lazlo Babai's time it takes to, to see if something is uh, isomorphic to something else, right? Um, this is called sub-exponential, right? Because it's not quite exponential, but it's just about exponential, right? Which takes a long, long time and it isn't very efficient. And this is called quasi-polynomial. Uh, which what that means is it's very very close to polynomial time, right? So there is a polynomial that could give you the function of time that you would need But it's not quite polynomial. It's like just above that The question is how to do this Okay, so what Laszlo um, Has done is he's splitting graphs into different parts using what's called canonical coloring and canonical uh, equal partitioning or partitioning and we do this by using colors and breaking up graphs. It seems really, really simple, but again, with a whole lot of vertices, it's very, very hard, and it's very, very hard to prove that it's more efficient, okay? Which is what uh, was essentially what he did, okay? So let's say we have two different graphs and we're trying to see if they're isomorphic. This should be obvious that, that it's isomorphic, but here's what the algorithm actually says to do, okay? So given two graphs, um, the first way, canonical coloring is to color the nodes in terms of degree right so what we're going to do first is we're going to we're going to look at this first node right here and that has degree one it has one other neighbor okay so we're going to color this green and then the next node down right that has degree three that's that's a neighbor of three different ones so we're going to color that red and no particular reason we're just trying to differentiate two things and then each other node has degree two. But we're going to differentiate it even a little bit further and say that uh, these two nodes that are neighbors to, to, to red, we're going to call those yellow. And then the rest, this is just uh, degree two nodes. right? So these aren't anything special. The yellow are neighbors of red with degree two. And then the green is just degree one. Okay, and then what we can do is we can go to the next graph and start to just do that algorithm. Right, so this is degree one, 
we notice that this is degree two. Its neighbors are also degree two. Or sorry, that red is degree three. Its neighbors are degree two. Right, and then its neighbors are also degree two. And so they correspond, right? So you would do this uh, for very, very large graphs and see um, if those colors correspond to one another. And as soon as you come up with, with an irregularity, that's when you know that it's not a graph isomorphism. If you can't come up with an irregularity, that's when you know it's a, it's a graph isomorphism. And what this does is all it does is it, it reduces the number of things that you have to check. Right, so you, you find an kind of a quote unquote irregularity in a graph, you color that, and you see if you can find that in another graph, and then, and then you kind of spread out the colors from there. Okay, so another example um, is called canonical partitioning. Um, and if you notice, every single node on this example is just degree three. Okay, and this doesn't have a graph that I'm comparing it to, but this is what we would do. Okay, um, and what we can do, uh, we could color this. Right, but they would all have the same color because they have they all have the same degree, right? Degree three, degree three, degree three, and so on. So it's not very helpful because it's just the same thing. But what we can notice is that there is this section where there are no triangles. Right, and then we can go we can find that irregularity in a different graph and then color out from there. And once we find an irregularity, then it's not a graph isomorphism. If there is no irregularity, then it is graph isomorphism. Okay. Um, the only like problem that this algorithm runs into is a very, very symmetric graph called uh, Johnson graphs. And the example I have here is called the Peterson graph. Um, and the problem with this is we could compare these two, and obviously these are going to be isomorphic. Um, but if we rearrange one in such a way that it's not obvious, it becomes really, really hard to pinpoint if it's, um, if it's isomorphic, especially if the other graph is also symmetric, right? So what you would do is you would make it not symmetric, right? We would color the star and then we could color out kind of like what we did above, above. Okay. Again, but this is really, really hard because it's so, so symmetric. Luckily there are different algorithms for these types of graphs. Um, that work really, really well, just not Laszlo's um, algorithm. Okay, so why is this important? Um, this is a big deal because this is moving a like fundamental question in mathematics period, but especially combinatorics, um, of how hard we could make this problem, right? So there are different classes of, of difficulty in combinatorics and math, uh, which I have drawn over here. Right, there's NP hard, there's NP complete, there's NP, and then there's P. The most efficient problems to solve lay in the P difficulty. Right, and what this means is that it can be solved in polynomial time. Right, so there's a function that is a polynomial that gives us the amount of time or the number of steps in order to solve each problem. Right, and we discussed that um, originally this graph isomorphism problem was only solvable in like sub exponential time which is way, way greater than, than polynomial. So that would lay very, very close to NP complete, very basically, okay? Um, what Laszlo Babai has done though, is he brought it to quasi polynomial, which is a whole lot closer to P. It's not quite P, but it's very, very close to it, okay? Um, and up here, I have a couple of different uh, notes from one of his lectures, right? Class NP, that's non-deterministic polynomial time. So it's not quite polynomial, but it's also not quite exponential. Um, then there's class NP complete, which is just not solvable in any type of polynomial time. Um, and there's those three classes, right? NP hard, I didn't really look into, um, but the, the three classes that we're really worried about is NP complete, NP and P. The graph isomorphism question is kind of laid in this area for a really, really long time. We knew it wasn't quite NP complete, but we definitely know it's not P, right? Because it seems a whole lot easier than the hard problems, but a whole lot harder than the easy problems. Okay, so that's his algorithm and kind of this difficulty thing. That's why it's so important. Okay, um, so I watched a couple of his lectures. I read a couple of articles from him, and this is where I'm getting all this information. Um, but I'm hoping this kind of paints a, a pretty clear picture of what the algorithm actually is and what it means, okay? 
So that's all I have. Um, thank you for watching.